Welcome to the Holistic Health Bites podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Nicholson, crime scene investigator turned functional health investigator. This podcast is here to share bite-sized episodes and unique interviews on a wide variety of health topics to empower, enlighten, and educate you to live your best, most vibrant life. Disclaimer, all information you hear on this podcast is for information only and constitutes individual opinions of the person speaking. This should not be taken as medical advice. Being a listener of this show does not initiate a practitioner-client relationship between you and the hosts or panelists on this show. Please discuss these topics with your medical professionals before making any changes to your health. Okay, let's dive in. Welcome back to the Holistic Health Bites podcast. Today, we're going to have a fun conversation about fertility and infertility causes and things that maybe you didn't know. So I am welcomed with my special guest today, Susan Fox. Welcome, Susan. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. So will you just tell everybody a little bit about your background, maybe your story, you know, whatever you want people to know about it before you about you before we dive into the conversation. For sure. So I'm a doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine. That is my degree and a licensed acupuncturist in the state of California. And for the past 23 years, fertility has been my specialty. So I've been helping uh, women, people and couples uh, with their struggle with fertility, whether they're trying to conceive naturally or going through the advanced reproduction productive therapies like egg freezing, IUI, IVF. And uh, it uh, it has been clear to me as we have progressed over space and time that a lot of our lifestyle uh, exposure and, and habits are part and parcel of what is causing much of our fertility uh, struggle. Obviously, it's not entirely, um, but we can certainly help anybody who is thinking of wanting to get pregnant or egg freezing, because that's a big um, perk in the corporate world or IVF um, to prepare better so they have better outcomes. Because here again, I think that there is a... um, uh, a presumption that that once once you step into that world, you come out with a babe in arms, and it's not a guarantee. But yep. we can improve those. We can improve those odds. I love that. I love that. It's such a great mission because it's such a life and heart wrenching situation when you know you so badly want children, and for whatever reason, all the things that we're going to dive into, it's just not easy, and it just doesn't come you know, as simply as maybe we would like. So I would love to just, let's just dive right in. Okay. Let's talk right. about and you're some absolutely of right. It is an existential crisis that I, that I am bearing witness to on a regular basis. It is not, it's not a mere disappointment. I mean, people's uh, experience of themselves and as human beings is altered for, for the struggle. Yeah, yeah for sure. So let's just, you know, get right to it. What are some of the things that people maybe let's just start with the things that they may be doing wrong to begin Mm -hmm. with. Um, Mm -hmm. Even maybe before they ever are trying to get pregnant or think about their fertility, but just some of what are some of those lifestyle things that people are just missing the mark on? Yep. I would say that number one um, uh, thing to to be aware of is our exposure to environmental toxins in our food, in our water, in our clothing, in our personal care products. Uh, You know, we, it has become so ubiquitous that we, you know, get the wrinkle resistant, stain resistant, waterproof clothing that in order to be those things is coated with endocrine disrupting, um, you know, uh, chemicals that we don't really need. I mean, there are ways to, you know, to, to mitigate some of the elements of weather without putting this on our skin day in, day out, and then sleeping on it because we don't want to wrinkle in our sheets overnight. So we're breathing this, you know, for eight hours, hopefully we're sleeping eight hours. Uh, so I would say some of it just, and, and because of this, some of it is occurring when we are in utero. So when you think about by the time a person is thinking, oh, I would like to, you know, maybe, maybe get pregnant, maybe have a baby. That's uh, you know, oftentimes 30 plus years of being exposed to this on a daily basis. This was not the case 50 years ago. And so cleaning up some of that, be, being aware of, you know, what, what are you, are, are you wearing organic cotton, natural dye, and it doesn't have to be cotton. It can be silk or hemp or linens, but, you know, really try to stay clear of the polyesters and all of these other things. And then with our personal care products, you know, we used to use soap 
<laughs> and now we use all kinds of things that are laden with parabens and phthalates. And here again, these are the things that are not only cancer causing in the in the you know larger scheme of things, but more you know directly are um, uh, are endocrine disruptors. And so uh, you know we don't need to have those those pretty painted nails uh, in order to have lovely hands that do a, a fine job of everything they're supposed to be doing. You know we don't need to be brushing our teeth with something that that has our mouth feel minty fresh, but there's not a hint of mint in there. It's all chemicals, right? Going directly into our bloodstream. So that just that level of awareness, I think is important. Obviously the eating organic and the eating, you know, uh, fresh if possible or fresh frozen, if, you know, if not possible so that we're not also eating, um, you know, PBAs out of the can or the processed food and things like that. Yeah, there's so many things there. And I think one of the easiest things that I've always told my clients is because it can be a little overwhelming. You look at some of these labels, if they even have them, a lot of our personal care products and home cleaning products don't even have labels. We don't even know what's in them. Absolutely. But one of the easiest things to look for is fragrances. Yes. If there's any fragrance added, unless it says organic essential oils, mm -hmm. it's a toxic chemical concoction of who knows what. Exactly. And so that's one really easy thing to just look at your products. And if it has a fragrance or a perfume added, mm -hmm. toss it. get rid mm -hmm. of it. That's one of the I easiest things to find. In agree those more. I, I had a conversation with a, a, a scientist who, whose, whose business is uh, environmental testing uh, at home, environmental testing. Um, it's mil million marker. I'll give a plug for Dr. Hua. Nice. Um, and she, she said the very same thing. She said, if there's anything that says fragrances, there are, there's not enough flowers on the planet to give us all of these fragrances that we think we're getting and they use the word natural but natural doesn't mean healthy natural we've got we've got so much um you know sort of mi mistaken nomenclature in our in our marketing that we're we're duped a little bit in thinking oh you know this is lavender scented so they probably picked the lavender from a lovely organic farm well no they didn't yeah. probably <laughs> probably doesn't have any lavender in it exactly at all exactly yes 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 yeah, so i would say that's that's you know probably one of the easiest thing simplest I won't say easiest because as yeah. you say uh, it, it, and you did mention reading labels you know in an ideal world we wouldn't read labels because for food anyway because we're eating something that we know this has been picked from the tree pulled from the ground that egg was taken out from that chicken's bottom or that was the chicken so you know it, it, st trying to stay away from those center aisles um, and uh, you know use them sparingly and you when we need to use them you you know look for organic so that you can you know minimize the toxic exposure we are designed to detox we're just not designed to detox this level of to toxic exposure yeah yeah and i think you started off with a, an aspect that i think a lot of people are just completely not aware of which is the clothing i think this is a, a more emerging thing that frankly i didn't even know about until more recent years i knew about cookware and you know cooking in plastics and mm -hmm. personal care products and cleaning care products and some of the, the like low hanging fruit when it comes to mm -hmm. toxins mm -hmm. but i had no idea until relatively recently the mm -hmm. level of bpa in our mm -hmm. clothing and mm -hmm. the level and of just these, yeah, these toxic chemicals mm -hmm. that are up against our skin that especially like undergarments or pants or things like that, that are up against, you know, sensitive areas of the body mm -hmm. every yep. day, all mm -hmm. day long, yep. the that's, chemicals that are in your underwear are mm -hmm. just insane. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is a whole new area that people really need to focus on. And even more so if you're trying to get pregnant, because you're literally touching the parts that matter exactly you know the most when it comes exactly. to exactly and, and so. sweating so you're opening yeah. up your skin and your bloodstream to absorb these little you know the the breakdown of these micro microplastics that just you know cross that skin barrier and you know there you go so yes it's it's true and and ironically Maybe it's not so ironic, but I'm going to keep that term. You know, m much of the the other, uh, the rest of the uh, the Western world are banning a lot of these products, but it's not happened yet here in our country. So it, it, we, the onus is on us to say we're not buying that. And eventually, yep. you know, being the you know consumer buyer beware, and then not buying it, the shift will happen. It's not going to happen if we keep going to that same row of you know, shampoo and toothpaste and deodorant line and picking up those same 
conglomerate purchases again, there's no incentive for them to make the change. Yeah, for sure. We definitely have to vote with our dollars and our feet. So we have to choose wisely with with where we spend our money and our time. So for sure, Mm -hmm. I agree with that. So yeah. let's pivot a little bit more maybe out of the toxins and yes. talk about some other things. Because I know toxins is, of course, a huge thing, but it can also feel like ugh, there's nothing I can do about it. They're everywhere. Right. And so right. what are some other things that people can focus on? And we've talked Certainly. a little bit about specific foods and some of that, but what are yep. some so of the other I, things? I, I refer to the four pillars. So nutrition, we just kind of ticked that off, you know, organic, fresh flash frozen, uh, hydration, we do need to consume ample levels of clean water. So, you know, depending upon where you live and where your water source is, you may want to, you know, find a good filtered water or, or do a distillation process at home and then add back your minerals. um, Because we're made of water. So we don't have enough water, we can't clean our debris. Circulation is key, right? So in, in, in the area of fertility, I, I espouse moderate movement, you know, so that the pelvic bowl is not being sort of crunched up and torqued and twisted, but, you know, walking, jogging, if that is your thing, swimming, yoga, but carefully, Pilates, but carefully, because here again, if you don't have body awareness, you can, you know, you can have a lot of what's called the Valsalva uh, push where you're pushing down on your pelvic bowl and you're not letting that circulation get back in. I'm a, I'm a fan for the fertility time frame of using uh, passive circulations with with infrared and or a tens unit we call it TIAs transcutaneous electrical acupoint stimulation to just really just while you're relaxing you know if you're a Netflix watcher while you're <laughs> while you're whatever relaxation you're doing or what even frankly while you're at the computer but it would be nice to be in a more relaxed state than that just let that that uh, that deeper penetration of warmth and circulation get to the blood vessels that are perfusing to your ovaries and uterus so that those organs are healthier because they've had their nutrition and their hydration and they can get this good circulation and perform better to the hormonal signaling that is coming throughout the the you know four week ideally menstrual cycle right i love yeah. that yeah. And, so, and a caveat being when, when should someone be uh, interested in, in utilizing some of these, there is a time frame within which to do it from the end of menstrual bleed to ovulation, not okay. during a bleed and not post ovulation in a month that one has tried to conceive. Okay. That's it. Yeah. That's good to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to add disruptions to the process. Right. So that and finally sense. sleep. Right. I mean, so that's the fourth pillar, right. But this is something that we are, I, I think, uh, finally wrapping our heads around the importance of sleep as a prescription, um, you know, in the Chinese medicine clock, you know, it's long been ascribed that the hours between 11 PM and 7 AM, no surprise there are when we need to be asleep so that the organs of detoxification can do their job. And now we know that how we wake up and when we wake up will dictate how and when we fall asleep so that our circadian and hormonal flow and rhythms are, are intact and flowing. Yeah. These things are so interconnected. I see so many people that are like, I feel amazing. I only sleep five hours a night and, but I have all these, you know, unrelated, unrelated issues. Mm -hmm. And yet they're not unrelated. They really are all connected. If your sleep is disrupted and therefore your circadian rhythm is disrupted, your hunger hormones will be messed up. Your appetite level in general will be messed up. Mm -hmm. Your immune system will be messed up. Your thyroid will be messed up. Like all of these things are connected, even though you might not feel it, you might feel fine from a sleep standpoint or from a rested standpoint. Right but you are impacting all of these internal systems that are affecting other internal systems that affect other internal systems. And it's just one big domino. Absolutely. And if you're not feeling it now, there will be a pay the piper moment because we, we are organic beings ourselves and there will be a consequence. We just, it's just inevitable. So, um, you know, why not, why, why wait until either a lab value has changed or a symptom or sign has changed to the point where now you've got to, recover back to zero in order to start feeling well again, like, you know, make, make those changes now so that you don't have to get to that point. Yeah. I think as a society, we're so focused on how we feel that it, we often wait until it's far too late and much more difficult if Mm -hmm. possible at all to reverse these things. And if we could just get back on track before Mm -hmm. it becomes something we actually feel or 
you know, like you said, see on a lab test, yeah. then, you know, it's much easier. Prevention yeah. is way easier than reversal absolutely. for sure. Absolutely. absolutely. And, and sometimes I was go so far as to say, sometimes we are um, almost more enamored with how we look than how we feel and how we feel has this filter of how we think we look. So we're really not even feeling completely. And that brings us to, you know, the, the, that sort of self-care as health care, right? Take some time to reflect. You don't need to go meditate on a mountain. You're welcome to do that. But just take some time to reflect because here again, we're, we we each have a purpose for having, for being, you know, alive, breathing and contributing human beings. You know, just take a bit of, of time to say, you know, what is this? What am I doing? What do I want to do? And am I and am I on that path? And if not, how can I get there? Not in a stressful way, but more of a, a reflective, contemplative way, so that it becomes a creative endeavor or expression as opposed to a I must get there or else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so many of us have gotten just used to feeling terrible that it's just normal and we don't even recognize how bad we actually feel. Right. You know, we just right. attribute it to getting older or to, you know, some arbitrary event that passed or that, mm -hmm. you know, some recent, like we just came through the holidays. Well, I'm just more stiff and sore because of the things I ate over the holidays. Yeah, that might be true, mm -hmm. but it might also be true that you have underlying metabolic disorders that are contributing <laughs> to arthritis development and, you know, all these other actual conditions that are developing that matter. Mm -hmm. or fertility for that matter. I was yeah. listening to a wonderful uh, reproductive endocrinologist share the science of how was, I would say the metabolic dysregulated person tends to be the polycystic ovarian person and that they are seeing the, the products of, of metabolic dysregulation, elevated sugars, elevated inflammatory markers in the follicular fluid of that egg that is about to be ovulated. So that's you know where I say it, it, it can start even before in utero. So yep. let, let's clean it up now. So we're giving ourselves and our future generations, our progeny and our future generations a, a better chance. Yeah. And if you go into a pregnancy already having insulin resistance, type two diabetes, you know, any of these metabolic disorders, not only are you going to have a much harder time just because your metabolic health is suffering and so your overall body is suffering, you're going to have more pain, you're going to have more just issues, more risk of hypertension, more mm -hmm. risk of all of the pregnancy complications mm -hmm. and gestational diabetes risk goes up. And then you also cause all of that for your baby, right? Is right. that really the path you want them to go down? Do you right. really want them behind the eight ball before they're even develop before their first breath. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 I, I mean, this really is a big deal and this isn't mm -hmm. all on the mom. Mm -hmm. All of this applies to the dad as well mm -hmm. because you know, it does and yet I'm, every day. Yeah. It, it, it definitely applies to the dad as well because, because, you know, miss uh, mismanagement of one's health as a male uh, or as one with, with sperm um, is going to affect his morphology, which will contribute to the DNA sort of composite of this child. That being said, I'm sorry to say people who are going to be carrying a child, the onus is on us a little yes. bit more. We have nine months of, of duty <laughs> and then, then a lifetime of duty. So, you know, it's, it's just, it's, I would actually say it is the luck of the draw because I feel that we are very fortunate to be able to be the ones to, to carry life and to, and to foster life that way. So, yeah. um, so know, the onus let's, is let's on the rise. partner to help support that for sure. Make for it sure. Easy. Yes. Don't make it harder. Yes. Don't bring don't, ice don't, cream home. Don't exactly. Bring don't come home. home with pizza and beer and, yes. and, and, and want to share it because right. there is that ha that's a psychological habit yeah. that tends to happen in, in, you know, sort of couple or nuclear arrangements where, you know, I'll do it if you do it mm -hmm. and then we're doing it together. So we're, you know, we're okay. But of course then we're, you know, we're agreeing to, to, be unhealthy together. So maybe the, yeah, we're yeah. at the first of the year. I, I hope that I'm not, I hope that the timing of this is not, yeah. is not going to come out in the middle of the year, yeah. but, but right today is it, we're at the first of the year. It's a great time not to make resolutions because those are made to be broken, but to make intentions for ourselves so that we yeah. can really just begin today to do what we can today, knowing that today's progress will foster tomorrow's as well. Yes. Yeah. Let's yeah. work together to be healthier, not unhealthier. So I think that's a great thing. Exactly. And the more people we can surround ourselves with that are on that same path, the easier it will be. 
Exactly. Because the law of reciprocity works both ways. So if somebody brings you junk, you feel obligated to eat it mm -hmm. or you feel obligated to eat it with them. Mm -hmm. Just like mm -hmm. the same is true. If they're not indulging, you're far less likely to indulge. So exactly. surround exactly. yourself by people that are doing the same things as you are, that have the same goals, that understand the mission, that aren't going to make it harder for you. And maybe do a social media detox yes. where, right, where, yes. where, you know, it's, it's not to say go away from social media. It's, it, ha it has so much value to, to giving us information, but be judicious as to, you know, who are you following? What are they offering? It doesn't serve you to be, you know, having, having this in your feed, which means in your brain feed every day, you know, uh, for months on end, you know, maybe it does require taking a, a detox day or, or more so that you can just, you know, look at the sky, take a deeper breath, you know, have that, that extra glass of water, as opposed to the glass of wine while you're scrolling through the feed. Um, and, and you really go for that social media detox. Yeah, I would add all media to that. All media. From the news <laughs> off to stop reading the newspapers yeah, yeah, and the right. news feeds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Good point. All the Good things. point. Yeah. Yeah. So what are yeah. some other things that people can start implementing if they're planning to get pregnant or maybe they already mm -hmm. are? What mm -hmm. are some of the things that they can really start doing to make sure that it's going to be successful? Right. Right. So, well, I would say for for, for plan in, in addition to, you know, doing the right things lifestyle wise, take the right supplementation. Unfortunately, you know, we we live in a in a country that has no uh, no requirements for that labels contain I mean, the ingredient that that that, that uh, supplements contain what the labels say, and and so often testing is done and uh, to demonstrate that there is nothing of that product. It, that, that it claims to have or the bioavailability isn't there. So you're taking it and getting just expensive excretions. So a, a good prenatal is, is important, of course, because we want, we need to prevent, you know, the, the low vitamin, you know, Bs that would create a spina bifida uh, scenario. I would say with, with a good prenatal, try to see that that prenatal has either what's called a methylated folic acid or folate because there is a certain population and you can take the test to find out if you are that population of, with the MTHFR gene mutation that cannot translate folic acid to folate. So you're taking your folic acid until the cows come home and you don't have a bit to donate to this growing embryo fetus. Um, for preconception care, there are way, there are supplements that really help with mitochondrial support. A, a good, again, high quality coenzyme Q10. Um, you want that to be a, from a, 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 a resource that is called Kaneka, because that is actually what tends to be most bioavailable. And then a high quality, because it's fish and fish oil derived from fish. And we want to make sure that fish is a healthy fish, a high quality DHA for fetal brain development. So that, that, that would be the basic bundle that I would say. And then obviously, depending upon what's going on with that person, if she or, or they have, um, you know, access to testing thyroid, to testing vitamin D, to testing iron and ferritin to rule out any of these things that could be implicated in an early pregnancy loss, you know, get those tested, get those supplemented if and as needed. Don't just take them because taking them when you don't need them is as harmful as not taking them when you do need them. Yeah. So on the fish oil, I completely agree with you and really with all the supplements, you really do need to know what's in them and the reputable products. Mm -hmm. What's your stance on actually eating the fish? Oh, well, I would say certainly, uh, you know, a wild caught salmon or, you know, okay. a, a healthy oily fish here again, regrettably, our waters are polluted. So, you, you know, we have to be careful. And I don't, I've not yet met a person who wants to eat enough fish to get the, you know, the, the dosage of the 400 milligrams DHA. So definitely eat the wild caught salmon to your heart's content. Um, but I would say, during the preconception and prenatal time, you know, in, intend to supplement as well. Obviously, okay. caveat being, I defer to your OBGYN or your reproductive endocrinologist. I, you know, I am not, I am not prescribing anything out here yeah. in in uh, in uh, the land of podcasting. <laughs> right. Okay. And then would there be anything special that you would recommend for someone who has been struggling with fertility issues mm -hmm. and is working on all these things to repair metabolic health and is, mm -hmm. you know, just 
really struggling to get back yeah. on track? Or is there anything special you would say to that person who is already having problems? Yeah. I, well, yes, I, 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 without, without self-promoting, I would say get to a specialist. Don't, don't let too much time wait because there could be something at play that can be either, you know, they can have an intervention either medically, if it, it could be a structural issue where sperm can't meet egg, then there's no amount of supplement or healthy lifestyle that's going to get sperm to meet egg. You might need, uh, you might be that candidate for either, you know, a, a, a procedure or, or you know, an IVF to get sperm to meet egg in vitro. Um, so you know, get get the testing done. You know, begin with begin with a specialist. Um, oftentimes it is beginning with your OB, um, and but sometimes that OB isn't a, a fertility specialist. You know, he or she is is who you see once that positive of pregnancy has happened. Um, you know, as I say, not trying to promote myself, but, but the, you know, people like myself who've been doing this for 20 plus years have the resources available to, you know, do a, a coaching call to just say, you don't have to come see me. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. You can call me from, you know, Oklahoma and I can say to you, have you had these tests done? Go see your OB or your reproductive specialist and, you know, see if, if you know, if, he or she can perform these for you uh, because, you know, time can be of the essence and time is just a, feels like an enemy when you want to have, when you want to have that positive pregnancy test and yet another cycle up to, you know, three months, six months, a year goes by. It's, it becomes very, very um, psychologically yeah. difficult. Yeah. And so are the tests that you would be asking them about or asking them to see if they can get or offering to do for them, would mm -hmm. that be is it like lab testing or is it lab more testing. like ultrasound procedural kind of test? It, well, it's, it would begin with lab testing because lab okay. testing could flag whether or not there is a physiological reason. So, and it's an easy test to get, right? You know, you just go get your lab draw. And mm -hmm. if those tests come back clean as a whistle, then yes, you would go in for some diagnostic testing with, okay. a, with a medical doctor who could go in and make sure tubes are patent and there's no septum in the uterus and so on, or there's no... Um, endometriosis or endometrioma right. on the on the ovary itself, okay. uh, but if but if it if it's if we can identify something even in the labs that is a physiological imbalance, oftentimes we can make that change that will that will allow for systems to begin working again. Our bodies really are brilliant, and they do yeah. want to work again when we're given the when given the right tools and environment yeah. with which to do so. So that's always a good start because. You know, even if one finds herself or themselves going into advanced reproductive therapies to have improved your physiology beforehand is going to improve your successful outcome because it is not just about the quantity of eggs that are being harvested and put into the in vitro process. It's about the quality. And that's where each of us can make the difference. So if, if there's nothing else you hear from this conversation, it is quality over quantity. And that and, and I, I say that because I want you to be empowered knowing that you can make those changes to improve your egg quality. And your uterine receptivity. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about someone who has been able to get pregnant, but mm -hmm. isn't able to maintain that pregnancy. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's also part of the fertility picture. Absolutely. You we know, it's, it's part of that whole yeah. reproductive pregnancy so, loss is a, is a, you know, a medical diagnosis. Yeah. So here again, we would look, we would look to labs to see, you know, can, can we see is there low progesterone after, you know, in the luteal phase? If so, uh, some would argue that that, that means that that egg itself was not viable. I argue against that argument because I say, let's find out, you know, let's give that egg to embryo to feed us a fighting chance by just supplementing with some progesterone. Okay. And that would be your medical doctor who could prescribe that uh, in, in the right doses. And there's really no downside, in my opinion, to taking progesterone for that two week wait. And if, if there is known low progesterone, taking it through that first eight to nine weeks of pregnancy to just make sure that uterine lining is intact and it won't degrade. So the embryo has a chance to tr develop into its trophoblast and create its own placenta. And the rest is, you know, it, it's good on its own. It doesn't need any more progesterone. Yeah. I would say the other thing that can be uh, that can contribute to a, uh, a an early pregnancy loss would be low vitamin D. 
it is it it is so uh, common to see low vitamin D. Uh, if there's low vitamin D, it may not be as simple as supplementing with vitamin D, but that's a good start. You also want to look to inflammatory processes. What's causing that vitamin D to go wonky? It's you know it, it, unless you're living in you know in an area where it's dark all the time and you're not getting any sunlight, you know our, our healthy food and so forth, you know should give us ample vitamin D and a little bit of supplementation should help. But if, but with a deeper dive of investigation, we want to make sure there's not an underlying inflammatory process. And that's where someone like yourself can help identify, rule out and, and help this person make changes. I would also say, look to make sure that there's not a, a like a low grade anemia, mm -hmm. low iron or ferritin, because that here again, isn't a common reason for uh, early pregnancy loss because a woman, not a person, naturally goes anemic and it, during her pregnancy as she's built growing more blood so quickly. Uh, yes. So if she's starting out or they are starting out a little anemic, then it's going to be um, it is it, it, there's there's a risk of, of of just not having enough yeah. hemoglobin or ferritin to to support the pregnancy. So those are the those are the few tests that I would say let's make sure that those are fine first. Yeah. And then you can be very strategic in how you handle the specific problem rather than just throwing random iron supplements or vitamin D supplements at someone. You can mm -hmm. actually test and and strategically target the thing that's actually out of whack. I think that's exactly. a good strategy and exactly. my favorite use of using tests as well. So that we're not just guessing, yes. but we're being yes. very strategic and, yes. you know, not yes. putting people on things that they don't need to be on. Because like you said I earlier, see. too much of a lot of these things are just as bad right. or worse exactly. than not I having mean, enough. So. Vitamin D is a hormone. High levels can be toxic. Yeah. Excess iron is toxic. So don't just go taking these things because yep. you heard us talking about it. Uh, yep. And that is something that I often see in my private practices. I, I have to take people off supplements yep. that that have that have sort of just come across their their awareness, and so they're taking a you know, prenatal and, and then extra bees and then extra iron. And then, and I'm, and I say, you know, why? And they go, well, because I read it somewhere yeah. or, a, or a group, a group, you know, said I should. And, um, and I say, well, you know, it could be the very thing that is your problem. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. They, we don't want to be adding toxicity mm -hmm, even with good mm -hmm, things. So that's, mm -hmm. that's a good Test, point. Don't guess. I think yes. is that, is that adage that yes. I've heard before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Mm -hmm. I want to circle back to the prenatal. When do you recommend starting a prenatal? Mm -hmm. so it's I really mean, prenatal. So it should be mm -hmm. before you're getting pregnant, right? Right, right. right. And I actually just delineate preconception care yeah. to prenatal care. So okay. preconception care, I would say, to the best of your ability, because I don't want to have anybody panic, uh, about three, at least three months before you try to conceive, because the three month, 90 to 120 day time frame is referred to as folliculogenesis, the time from which an egg goes from its primordial pool, which means we don't know, it's somewhere in there, it's, it's the, it's the, you know, the galaxy inside to then it, it, it comes forward to its, uh, it's you know, up, up to its antral phase. I won't, I won't label all of the phases, but that's a 90 to a 120 day time frame. So you can have a beneficial impact every cycle along the way. You know, if you get pregnant that first month, cool. You're taking your prenatals anyway. If you don't get pregnant that second until that second or third month, also cool because you've had all of this time to give the nutrient rich blood flow to your ovaries and the follicles within and the eggs within. And then do you continue that on if you are pregnant or should you switch it up once you're pregnant? Well, you, it, it, there is a difference between what you take for preconception and what you take for prenatal. You continue with your prenatal and your DHA. Okay. You stop CoQ10. And, okay. I, and I, I don't know what else you might be taking out there, but right. I would say, you know, consult with someone because yeah. much of what, for instance, CoQ10 is for improving and enhancing mitochondrial function. We don't necessarily want to have an influence on pushing mitochondrial function on an embryo that is mitosing perfectly well. It doesn't need a push. So let's just take these things away. And frankly, oftentimes the person is not feeling so great anyway. So minimizing the amount of, yeah. uh, of swallow <laughs> is, is a gift. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And would your strategies change any, if it's a subsequent pregnancy, you know, they've already got children and they're having another child mm -hmm. or even potentially multiples, would mm -hmm. any of your strategies change? 
Well, the, 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 the strategy that would change it, it, it back to the recurrent pregnancy loss is that I would want to make sure that there wasn't an autoimmunity um, condition that had, that had developed in that sort of uh, prenatal to postpartum, oh, postpartum timeframe, um, because it's common. Uh, you know, Hashimoto's autoimmune hypothyroid is common. So I would want to look for that. And if that were so, uh, if that were present, if those antibodies were present, I would be pretty bossy pants about saying, let's get rid of gluten because it is a known trigger for the autoimmune uh, uh, function, if you will, the autoimmune uh, exacerbation or amplification. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, I'd say get rid of soy because yeah. that also can trigger. Uh, and, and for that person, I would say, get yourself to your OBGYN or your reproductive specialist and get a low dose thyroid because it is important to have a, a, a constant steady level of thyroid in one's body during pregnancy. If it dips too low, there's the risk of loss. Hmm. So, okay. yeah, but I would say, you know, if, for, you know, a, 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 you know, subsequent pregnancy is, is yet another pregnancy. So I, I, there aren't a whole lot of changes that I make unless I see something that's come up as being the cause for why that person is having difficulty getting and staying pregnant. Okay. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Very cool. Any kind of parting words, anything you'd like to wrap this up with? Well, thank you. I, I, you know, as I say, Chinese medicine doc, my filter is through the five elements of Chinese medicine. I designed a quiz that really helps a person identify where they may tend to go out of balance. We go out of balance differently depending upon our constitution and our constitution is, is uh, encapsulated in this element persona, if you will, or organ system. So I have a quiz, if I may offer it, it's called yourfertilityquiz.com. Pretty easy, yourfertilityquiz.com. And, and, and it will it will take you through a series of questions, it, which will generate a report for you, which will generate, you know, kind of a, a series of, of emails that give some of these tips that we talked about. So, uh, so for the person, for instance, who might be more of the wood element, my tips would be more about, you know, movement, getting, getting that cheap is what we refer to getting that chi moving because when it's stagnant we get depressed we get irritable we get road rage or the person who tends more to be the lung element when that's out of balance they may find themselves more you know sort of collapsed and grief stricken the person who is more fire element may find themselves you know going out and partying too much because they want to escape the 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 reflection of that this is a difficult moment for them so uh, that uh, I, I offer that to anybody listening if if they want to learn more about what their element might be and then some some things they can do to help um get back into balance Oh, I love that. I, I think quizzes are so fun and they're such a great way to get some education without feeling like you need a textbook or you need, exactly, you know, this big, long thing. So I think that's exactly. a great way to do it. Exactly. And, and and it's true. Quizzes can be fun, but I promise this isn't going to turn you into a tree or a water or <laughs> <laughs> your favorite superstar. Because <laughs> yeah. I've taken some quizzes and I think, well, that was not necessarily the best use of my time. Right. <laughs> it was fun, but it was. <laughs> yeah. But I think this one, you'll find it, you'll find it to be uh, beneficial and, and, and useful. Good, good. I love it. We'll definitely link that up in the show notes for anybody Thank who you. wants to find you. And, you know, is there somewhere else that they can just, you know, find yes. you if they want to yes. learn more about your work or mm -hmm. they want to schedule a consultation? Absolutely. So my, my private practice is drsusanfox.com, D-R-S-U-S-A-N, fox.com. And then I do offer through this whole time that we've, we're in our indoors and not able to get out to see our providers. I have, I developed an online course that is a lot, has a lot of DIY applications for obviously I'm not going to have you put needles in yourself for acupuncture but as I say they're acupoint stimulation techniques and protocols that I've designed you know uh, I've got the devices I've got the uh, the videos that explain exactly how to use the devices there are qigong exercises for the different phases of your menstrual cycle there are mind body meditations that when using headphones you get this subliminal binaural beat that really helps that brain shift from its sometimes deeply embedded, is this ever going to happen, fearful mindset to actually, I feel uplifted and, I, and I'm and i optimistic as a result of, you know, having um, uh, engaged in this discipline for a bit. 
I love that. Binaural beats are such a powerful way to calm the mind or get in the right state of mind, depending on what you're trying to do. I kind of say it's like jumping the cable of your, on your brain. You've got a cable that's laid deeply and it's kind of hard to get out of it, but the binaural beat will help you jump that cable and and design a new one. And that, and that company, that, that website, by the way, is called healthuniversity.co. And the U is spelled Y-O-U, health, Y-O-U, university, as in the university of you, Mm -hmm. .co. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah. I love that. And for your private practice, is that strictly just to local people near you or it, is, it that is also- mostly to local people near me? Yeah. Yes. I mean, I, I do some video consults, but um, for the most part, it's, it's, you know, sort of in-person yeah. uh, co- you know, consultation and treatment. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, you so me. much for sharing oh, all of your wisdom it's today been and my all of pleasure. your it's application. Been, I, I could talk about this until the cows come home or until the babies arrive. So right? I love <laughs> thank it. you so much for having me. Absolutely. It's such a powerful thing to focus on. And I know you've had lots and lots and lots of success stories. So I'm thank you so much for sharing all yes. of this info with everybody today. Thank you. And to all the listeners, we'll catch you again on future episodes. Thanks for being a faithful listener to the podcast. I'd love it if you left me a five-star review on this podcast so that others can more easily find this valuable information. Did you know I also work one-on-one with clients? I approach solving health challenges like I approached solving crimes by conducting a thorough investigation into your case. Sadly, hundreds of millions of people in the U.S. have insulin resistance, pre-diabetes, and diabetes, and the vast majority have no idea. I'm here to fix that. If you struggle with low energy, stubborn weight, hypertension, sleep disturbances, or any other undesired symptoms, let's talk. All you have to do is schedule a free call. The link will be in the show notes. And no, you do not need to live near me.